Hi everybody. If we could we could wave hello. To, I am I'm here with with Shell. I, we don't have them, we don't have them alphabetically correct, but we have Hana, oh, Sarah, nice, Sarah, nice. Ava, Eva, and Life. Yep. So we're here, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, the music that they've created and their performance here this evening at the Wildy Theater. And so I'm going to just sort of shotgun these questions, and whoever would like to answer from time to time, we can do that. All right. So, so the first one is, you know, there's an American tradition of family entertainers, the Jacksons and the Osmonds and the Dixie Chicks and the Almond Brothers. Uh, so I've got a couple of questions to you guys uh, relating to you being sisters, being, being family. I, I have four sisters, by the way. Uh, so um, first of all, seriously as a band, when did you guys decide, hey, the four of us collectively together as sisters, could, could we think we've got something here. There's, there's, there's a creative spark. When, 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 did that, when did that happen? How old were you guys? I feel like that was probably six years ago, six to eight years ago, um, and so we would have been probably, I mean, I would have been like 17, 18, and uh, we had been you know, touring with our dad and uh -huh. backing him up, and we slowly began to write songs ourselves mm -hmm. and collaborate on instrumentals, especially, I guess, and we slipped into songwriting and just found that we had a different style than our dad had. It was different from the songs we were playing with him. And so it slowly just kind of morphed into the four of us playing new music that we were not coming up with. Gotcha. And, and then in terms of, uh, for lack of a better term, sort of the instrumental assignments, how did that come about? I mean, piano, violin, mandolin, drums. What, how did that come about? Was it, was it just you, you, you uh, were attracted to the instrument or did Mom and Dad say, no, you're the piano player, you're the violinist, you're the mandolin player. How did that come about? Was it just natural selection? What do you think, Liza? I, I think it really was. Um, Eva was particularly drawn to the mandolin because our father happened to see one in a music shop. I was like, if I buy this, who wants to play it? Eva was just like, hey, like I'll play it. Uh -huh. And uh, Anna had always really wanted to play piano for at least a couple of years. And then there was an opening with the vocal jazz pianist. And she was able to finally take lessons. She had been wanting to for a couple of years. And Sarah, I think, was, was naturally drawn um, to the violin. It was very natural. It happened. And I was actually jealous of her at the time because it was very like masculine instrument. And I was I was a huge time boy growing up, so I was like, Sarah gets to play violin. <laughs> and my dad was like, Liza, why don't you play harp? And I was like, oh, Dad, that is such a girly instrument. Um, but I ended up playing it because he had played it when he was younger. And, uh -huh. So I figured, why not, you know, and, and so that instrument being picked out for me was, was great because it, it meant that I didn't have to make any sense. <laughs> but uh, so I played hard for about seven years and, uh, and then I, I fell in love with the djembe and then just became crazy about the kit and uh, slowly phased out the heart. I think eventually I found my way to my natural instrument. And, and you are an excellent percussionist, so you moved from the drum set to the to the to the other sort of interesting you know Latin type percussion you did, you did a great job. Um, on uh, you know we talked about the aura and the dynamic of of, of you being sisters. Uh, you know, I guess there are a couple of key components to being in a band. One is when you're performing live, and the other is sort of the songwriting in the studio. Um, who who is sort of who do you feel is sort of driving the band on stage? Do you feel that? It, uh, let me put it to you this way. If somebody, if, if one of you ladies is having an off night, or, or you're having a bad day, does the rest of the, the, which three go, uh-oh, things are on shaky ground tonight? Well, I think that if any of us have an off day, everybody notices. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, I think that it's not so much driven by one person as it's driven as a whole. Mm -hmm. So if Liza, if Liza's having a bad day, we're all having a bad day, you know, as, as musically, uh -huh. musically speaking. So it's, um, yeah, it's a very, I think that it's a very tight, us decided not to be in the band anymore, it would completely change the dynamic of it. I don't know if we'd be able to, I don't know if we'd be able to. It wouldn't be show. Yeah. yeah. It'd, it'd be hell or, you know, <laughs> or she or. <laughs> Great. And then in, in terms of, of, of sort of a, a song writing and the, and the creative drive, I, I'm going to guess that each song has its own sort of genesis. But um, um, can, can you describe how, how some, which one would write a song? Who comes up and, and 
how does it get accepted by the group? And is there, I mean, there's so many aspects of songwriting. Are you timid about presenting the song, or are, are, are you bold about bringing something forward? How do you, how do you guys approach that? Even, well, I think it always starts with the concept that, uh, at least for me, when, when I write something, or something I love, I just go out into the living room and play it. You know, when, when we're rehearsing, and if everybody gravitates toward that, then, you know, we just take it from there, and at that point, it becomes a very collaborative process, where everybody starts putting their input and their parts, and it's very open, you know, when somebody starts to play something, like, oh, I love that, or they'll work something for a while, like, you know, not, not really feeling that, but we're all, we have developed over, you know, the years that we've been working together, this sort of open. So I don't think anybody's afraid to, um, you know, write a song or throw in their ideas. Mm -hmm. Great. And do do you find that when you when you're writing a song that it goes through uh, many sort of uh, different variations, like maybe uh, something that started out as a ballad becomes a bit more pop driven, or, or vice versa, or, or something maybe hits on a jazzier a jazzier uh, 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 road, so to speak. Does that happen in the collaborative process? Yeah, we definitely reworked songs, mm -hmm. you know, and it, sometimes you, you think you finished something, but really you haven't, um, it hasn't come home yet. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we rework songs a lot, actually, and try to, until we find something that we really feel is appropriate, you know, it's expressing the words, the music is expressing the words, the words are expressing the music, whichever comes first. Great, thank you. Um, now, I, I did a little reading up on you guys, and, and obviously you all have been, they, they, they use the phrase classically trained, obviously, uh, you know, have, have had serious uh, uh, musical education. What do you listen to just for pure enjoyment? Like if you if you just want to uh, just set your mind free and, and, and have, a, have a day out at the pool or, or in the park or whatever, what do you listen to? Let's, let's, What's on, what's on top, top, top songs on your iPod or whatever the heck it is you, you kids are listening to? I'm still listening to my 8-tracks. Yeah. Oh, well, recently I discovered Melody Gardot. And, okay. Um, she's kind of more like French, romantic, but classical jazz, too. She's probably more jazz, if anything, but I love her music. And John Mayer I was listening to this morning. Okay. We love Dave Matthews. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Sting. Sting, okay. And I love singer-songwriters. Mm -hmm. I love songwriting. There are a lot of artists in Nashville that I sure. listen to. Yeah. Alright, how about you? I love John Mayer and I love, like, to unwind, like, I listen to Time for Three, okay. which is like a classical trio, and um, the Punch Brothers. I okay. a lot of. And, yeah. How about you? It's al almost always I can go back to the Beatles and enjoy it. Yeah, I'll pick, like, a different album uh -huh. every time and really just, I get into the production, but if I'm if, if I really want to unwind, I'll listen to like, Abigail Washburn or like the box beats on cello. Okay, and how about you? I, I kind of go back and forth. Uh, recently I've been listening to quite a bit of like, Stevie Wonder and Jimi Hendrix, but then like for chill music I'll do Agnes O'Bell, who I just love for like, a good mellow you know, stuff. But then when I really need to get amped up, I listen to a lot of techno actually. <laughs> okay. Whenever I'm cleaning my room or <laughs> when I'm in the car or just if I need to really get amped up or something, Always very cool. Very cool. Um, now, it, do, it, are there artists that you go to if if um, you, you've got an idea for a song, a concept for a song? Is there someone that you go to uh, for influence? Like maybe there's a lyric or a part of a melody that you have in your mind, and, and, and maybe you're struggling with it. Will you go to your you know Will you go to your music collection and say you know what? I think maybe this is a McCartney thing, or I think maybe this is a Stevie Wonder thing, or I think this is maybe a John Mayer thing. Is there someone that you listen to, uh, or, or go to routinely for influence? No, I, I think we all have this goal to create a new sound. And so sometimes, you know, like, something will pop out and be like, oh my gosh, that's like Super Tramp. And it'll be like, awesome if it's just, you know, like sort of reflecting Super Tramp, as long as it's not a ripoff. Right, yeah. absolutely. So, we, you know, right. like there's that fine balance mm -hmm. where obviously there's nothing new under the sun and, mm -hmm. you know, like influence is really important, but uh, we, we don't necessarily go to any particular artist to help flesh out the song so much as we like to see what develops mm -hmm. between all the diverse influences that um, we, we have. 
Great. Yes. Great. Great. Um, and again, sort of being classically trained, uh, yeah. is it a struggle? Uh, because you know, pop music is is is, although you know, perceived as being light, it can be very interesting and intricate. Uh, but being classically trained, do you do you find it a struggle to move from sort of the the, the classical music music uh, training that you've had to flip it into a, a pop thing? Uh, I any, don't. Any, any no. difficulty? I love the combination of the two. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that they they actually go together really well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. like that, Eva has a song this year called "Paint My Life," and I think it's more the more classical song that we do. Mm -hmm. But it like the way that Hannah wrote the piano part and the way that. Um, Wrote the violin part and how that all goes together. Like it just melts perfectly. Great. So I don't great. think that there's ever really a problem going from classical to pop. Good. Well, you, you guys have have a great, great sound. Um, okay. Your career's getting busier. Your obligations are getting deeper. You're traveling more. Is it a drag or is it exciting right it's now? Exciting. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very is it exciting? exciting. Yeah. Good. Yes. We want more of it. Yeah. <laughs> good. 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 Um, you guys have played, obviously, you ladies, perfect for you guys, a uh, variety of venues. Uh, do you have a preference? You do you prefer to perform outdoors or indoors? Indoors. Indoor. I, mean, I think that there's something that happens when you're under the same roof as the audience. Mm -hmm. it's when you have like that open space, you don't, I don't think that you connect as well as when it's like a club or a theater like this, where mm -hmm. everybody's there and everybody's experienced the same thing. That's what. That's how I feel about with like outdoor shows that I go to that I watch. That I just don't. It, the connection isn't the same in an outdoor arena as it is like in an intimate club. We have point. We have counterpoint. I think. I was gonna say that my <laughs> favorite concerts. There's this festival that we have in Fort Collins every summer, and uh -huh. there was a group playing Aaron Copeland. You know, uh, it's what's for dinner. What's that piece? Was it really? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. yeah. And anyway, it was just one of my favorite childhood memories, like running around in the grass with my friends and listening to that music. Mm -hmm. So I think evening concerts, outdoors, like in the summer, those are so fun. I love stuff like that. And we, you know, Red Rocks is an outdoor right. venue, and I mean, that's pretty fun too. So yeah, they're both magical. They're they're both different. Like the club and the and the outdoor festival. Some of my favorite. Um, Definitely some of my favorite performances have been outdoor festivals. I yeah. like them both. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's it, like clubs are clubs are very nice because you it's a much smaller, more intimate thing. And mm -hmm. even a theater like that, it's 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 very much intimate. But then there's something really cool about kind of the vast space of outdoor venues. It's just like, when it's projected out there, and you can just, it, it feels very powerful to right. know that it's it's going that far. I guess. And then, but in a club, that's like you can definitely feel it a lot. More. Great answers. Um, uh, so, so speaking of venues, I, I know there were a couple of microphone and, and channel glitches tonight. But what do you guys think of the Wildly Theater? What do you think? Of oh, this it's lovely. Place? It's I, yeah, it's awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we were actually telling the um, the young people who were working every time we arrived. Mm -hmm that we used to work in a theater as well, and it was like this, just very beautiful, restored, and, and you know, it's like the perfect size mm -hmm. for theater. Yeah, great acoustics, and you guys sounded really, really good. I, I'm not sure who, if you brought your own sound technician tonight or if it was the house guy, but that it was- That was Sam, the house guy. It was a great balance, and the, the vocal harmonies uh, were, were great. I could, when you guys were doing three and four part harmonies, I heard every voice. It was, a, it was a nice great. balance. That's great. It was a nice uh, balance. Okay, here's some fun. Your dream tour mate to share the bill. So okay. all of a sudden now your record break, your CD breaks, and and the phone rings and it's so and so saying, hey, we're gonna do, we're gonna go six months on the road, and who 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 is that dream uh, date with? Tour date with? Muse. Oh, Muse. Muse. Awesome. Really? Yes. <laughs> Wow, that'd be a great bill. Uh oh, look out, look out. I'm trying to think who I'd like to tour with most. I think that John Mayer would. Well, I don't know if That's John Mayer would be fun. To we me. don't know. We don't know. I am. Mm, well, I love John Mayer, so John Mayer would be fun. Or yeah, you. Know, what do you think? I, for me, it'd be between probably Muse, Paul McCartney, and Dave Matthews Band. Oh, Dave, yeah. oh yeah, Dave Matthews Band. Dave Matthews Band. I really want to meet Carter Buford. Very good. Very good. <laughs>
Okay, so now you guys are in a recording studio and you're kind of putzing around and you got a, you got a, you got a day in the studio and there's a knock on the door and uh, your your dad says, "Hey, so and so would like to collaborate with you and write a song." Who's that person? Mm -hmm. I think I know your answer. <laughs> Who's that person? Sting. Sting. Who's that person? I don't know, Eva. What do you think? I don't know. There's a that is tough because there really are hard. a lot. Um, oh man. Obvi I think I think you were guessing I'd say Paul McCartney. Yeah. That would be like insane. That would be, be like I wouldn't know what to do with myself. I'd probably just sit there and be like, so wait, before we song right, can you tell me? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Before <laughs> we get into this, um, we everything. <laughs> Liza, would you do Cascade? I, but see, the problem there with a lot of the music I like, I don't actually know who's writing it because there's so many people that tend to be behind the scenes that are the actual songwriters mm -hmm. and they are the actual artists. Um, yeah. Skylar Gray, I think, would be really fun. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's new and up and coming, but she writes some very, like, I don't know, kind of like gut wrenching, like heartbreaking. Songs, but uh, very, very beautiful. So I would say Scott, very great. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, listen, uh, thank you for your time this evening. Yeah, thanks for it. And uh, much success. You guys have a terrific sound, a terrific group. I know you guys are going to go far. My name is Michael Kay, Weekend Underground. And these are the beautiful young ladies of Shell. And I guess before we go, we better say bye to mom and dad, right? <laughs> bye, bye, mom and dad. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Oh, thank you. Pleasure. Thank you so very much.